This one is going to be even quicker. I'm going to show you how to save collider states. So I'm going to go ahead, create a cube here like that. And I'm going to add a collider saver. I'm going to generate the unique identifier and drag and drop the collider in there. You can see that we can save the enable state and trigger state. So here by default, we have is trigger off and enabled on. Let's say that we go in game now. Okay, we don't really need to look at the cube anyway in game now, um, but let's say that we want it on trigger on, or rather is trigger on and enabled false. So now we go out of game, of course, now it's enabled on and trigger off. But if we go back in game, it is now disabled and on trigger. Not that it really matters, it could be off both of them. But basically the point of that is, um, well, to be honest, anything you may think of, but one of the main use cases that comes to my mind is, um, let's say in your RPG Builder, you have your character unlock a specific area of the world. Let's say that over here, there were like a huge wall or something. And after completing a quest or maybe killing an enemy or something, you want to disable this uh, collider for this world because you can actually now access the next area, right? Well, that's exactly what this is for. You could now um, disable a specific collider while you're playing the game, have a collider saver component on it. And whenever you go back in game, this collider is still going to be disabled for this character. So this character can now access this area forever, unless you decide to lock it again, which is completely possible. So yeah, that's pretty much what this uh, component is used for. Up to the next video.